Everywhere I go in the Philippines, they tell me, I've got a cousin, or I've got an aunt, or I've got a nephew, or I've got an uncle down in Australia, and that's wonderful. How are you? Hi. What have you got? Oh, Big John. Yeah. Gigi. Yeah. Terrific. And you here every day? Yeah. Yeah. We used to live in this building here, so I'm just come down to have a look. So very interesting. And now Filipinos in Australia make up the fifth largest ethnic grouping in Australia. So that's quite extraordinary. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of Australia's diplomatic presence in the Philippines, we share with you the story of our friendship and look forward to even stronger ties as we continue to face the challenges of now and the future together. And there we are. That's the Manila Hotel many years ago in a photograph. And this is the Manila Hotel today. Still looking very, very good indeed. On the 22nd of May 1946, the Australian Consulate was opened here in the Manila Hotel. And that was a very significant event because that was a month and a half before even the Philippines declared independence on the 4th of July. While the diplomatic relationship officially started in 1946, links between Australia and the Philippines go way back. So the unofficial relationship started way back in the 1800s. Uh, when Filipinos uh, traded down in Australia. And they traded hemp and they traded sugar with the colony of Victoria. And the distillers down in the colony of Victoria used the sugar uh, to produce rum. So that was the beginning of our trade relationship which has now been going for 200 years. Even before the Philippine Revolution, we already had connections with Australia because of this um, phenomenon called the Manila Men, the Pearl Divers. They uh, went to Australia like, like our present-day OFWs. In about 1900 or thereabouts, a group of enterprising men were the first Filipino migrants down to Australia. And they and their families packed up and went to the north of Australia and got involved in our pearling industry and they worked on the pearl luggers out of Broome and elsewhere in the north of Australia and they with their families became integral parts of the towns in which they settled. One of them, Heriberto Zarkal, became a jeweller in Thursday Island and owned a hotel named Nolly May Tangere. He operated a fleet of pearling boats with each having a Filipino name. Thomas Perto Liano, a Filipino from Marinduque, is known as one of the founders of Lombardina, an indigenous community in Western Australia. He and his family established the two churches and a community in Lombardina. The beautiful Thomas Bay is named after him. Over 4,000 Australian soldiers played a small but significant part in the Allied victory in the Philippines and 93 soldiers sacrificed their lives. Australian warships fought in the battles of Leyte Gulf and Lingian, materially contributing to the liberation of the Philippines and the retreat of Japanese forces. The opening of the Australian Embassy in the Philippines was product of the recognition of the U.S. to Philippine independence in 1946. The gentleman who opened the Consulate General 
uh, was a chap by the name of Keith Waller. In Australia, they might remember that Sir Keith Waller became the Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and so he started everything off here in 1946. The following year, the Philippines established its first consulate office in Sydney, Australia, which was elevated to a Philippine embassy in 1956. And we're in this hotel from 1946 until 1951. Then we moved to Binondo. So this building to my right here is the Ayala building. And we were here from 1953 until the early 1970s. It would have been a spectacular building in its time because we're standing in the heart of what is Old Town Manila. And it would have been really spectacular. And if we take a few steps over here, this building, the building behind me now, is the El Hogar building. And from 1951 to 1952, after we left the Manila Hotel, we moved to this building here. Once again, another spectacular building in the heart of Old Manila. True to the spirit of mateship and bayaniha, the friendship between the Philippines and Australia has become stronger through the years. Today, Australia is home to over 300,000 people of Filipino heritage. Cultural and education exchanges keep these ties strong, with over 100,000 Filipino students having studied in Australia. Among them are Australia Award scholars who are provided with scholarships by the Australian Government to drive development and socio-economic change in the Philippines. I was fortunate that I've been given scholarship uh, by the Australian government. Of course, the skills that I was able to acquire, especially in postgrad, the, and the knowledge uh, on uh, strategic management, on uh, strategic procurement, uh, of course, on uh, human resource management, all these are important skills for me when I was with the military, especially in the postgrad course. We were allowed to bring our family to Australia. Aside from the education that I got, it was actually a family experience for us. And uh, not only for myself, but also for my children, because essentially they were scholars themselves. They also got uh, their free education as uh, elementary students. The schooling, even for our children, uh, contributed uh, on, for their personal and professional growth, now that they are gainfully employed. And in 2019, we were the number one country for the Filipinos studying at a tertiary level anywhere in the world. And that's just marvellous. The relationship for me centres around a number of things. It centres around the, the defence relationship, which has always been important. Uh, we're one of only two countries that has a visiting forces agreement with the Philippines and that enables us to work closely together on a whole range of issues with the Philippines military, but including disaster relief and disaster resilience uh, because the Philippines is a country that is prone to being hit by typhoons, earthquakes and all manner of national disasters. Our development assistance partnership too is really important to us and every year about $80 million comes from Australia to the Philippines. And that's distributed across a wide range of areas. It goes to humanitarian relief and support and, and building of governance structures and finance structures and assisting with health and education. In terms of our trade and investment relationship, currently we've got about 300 Australian companies that are operating here in the Philippines. And despite COVID-19, pretty much all of them remain. Uh, they employ about 44,000 Filipinos and they're across virtually the whole range of industry. At the same time too, Australian companies beyond investing in the Philippines, we've got Philippine companies investing in Australia and many of the largest conglomerates here in the Philippines have got companies in Australia. So there's lots of two-way investment. So that gives me lots of confidence about where we're going to go into the future. So I, I think the relationship goes from strength to strength. You know, it's already good, it's only going to get better.
Cheers to 75 years of Philippines-Australia relations. Cheers to the 75 years of partnership between the Philippines and Australia. Mabuhay. Cheers for 75 years partnership with the Philippines. Mabuhay.